All right, everyone, we are in our final week of study. Can you believe it, Lisa? I know, it's been a journey, but hopefully it's been a good journey. And my prayer all along with this book was just to have a better understanding and not so much resistance around forgiveness. Um, and it's still gonna be a process. And I know six weeks is not long. Right. And so we're gonna continue this healing process long after it's over. And so that's what I'm really excited to talk about today. You know, how do we live this message out? Um, so it's not just something that, okay, we attended well to forgiveness with this six weeks, but in the context of our life, yeah. forgiveness is gonna be a reoccurring theme, I would say for most of us, because unfortunately, living in a sin-soaked world, um, hurt is gonna happen and misunderstandings are gonna happen and relationship hardships are gonna happen. And so how do we really live this out? Great question, yes. <laughs> how do we live it out, Lisa? We would love to know. <laughs> So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a staff devotion. And after I did the staff devotion, you and I talked and you're like, okay, this is probably something that needs to be part of our online Bible study. And so if you're taking notes today, and I hope you are, I want you to write down this word, pre-decide. And you can decide if you want to, to smush it all together, if you want to dash in between right, it. Yes. To, no, the, the spell check police are not going to come chasing <laughs> after you. But um, pre-decide. And the reason why I think this is so important is because I'm discovering the best time to forgive is before I'm ever offended. Now that can seem odd. How do you forgive something that you don't even know is going to happen or that hasn't even happened yet? Right. But what I mean is that I want to get better at managing my response to offenses. I can't better manage the offenses that are going to happen to me, mm -hmm. the ways that people are going to hurt me or do things. I, I can't control other people or even think about what circumstances might come my way. But I can pre-decide inside of my head to pick up less offenses. I can pre-decide in my head just because someone lays an offense down doesn't mean I have to pick it up, carry it with me and let it affect me the rest of that day. I can also pre-decide that I don't have to get so emotionally stirred up by everything. And let me tell you something I've been processing in counseling. <laughs> okay. okay. I can't wait to hear. Let's do it. <laughs> so let's just pull the curtain back. Let's just get right into where Lisa right, is right, right now Lisa. today. Yeah, we're really getting into okay, it. Okay. So are you ready for confession time? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to confess to you. I have a tendency, and I'm learning about this in counseling, to personalize things that other people say and do. So for example, and I'm working on this, so I'm just gonna give you the hope that I am working on this. For example, like let's say that you and I made plans to go to lunch today. And then you call me and you go, you know, I'm so busy. I just really cannot make lunch happen today. Now, here's the reality of your world. You really are busy. You have recordings that you have to do today. You've got online Bible study. Uh, technical details that you have to attend to today. You really are busy. That is a true statement, okay? So what you shared with me were facts that, hey, I'm just really busy today. I can't make lunch work. But if I'm personalizing it, what I'll do is I'll say, Kendra never really cared about me. Or she always prioritizes her job over me. Or she probably just really didn't want to go to lunch because you always make time for what you really want to do. And so do you see how, because I didn't pre-decide to not get so emotionally stirred up by what is for us a pretty practical thing, yeah. you know, that you couldn't do lunch today because, you know, you're busy, um, which is a made up scenario. I don't want Kendra to get any like... <laughs> Don't work so like, hard. Don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want you to get... Put boundaries in place, yes. <laughs> right. But, um, but do you see how important it is that my part to manage in this situation is not trying to control your schedule. My part to manage is what I say to myself in response to what you said. And, and I can really decide, 
am I going to personalize this and let it affect me and become so offended? And then we're going to have this big emotional stirring between us or this awkwardness or this tension between us? Or do I just accept what you said? Like, yeah, you know what? You've never betrayed my trust. You haven't before made me feel like that you're going to make up some story. We don't have some weird awkward dynamic in our relationship where I don't trust you. So when you say to me, you're too busy, I have to, I have the choice that I can predecide whether to just take that at face value yeah. or whether to attach a whole lot of emotion to it that probably isn't so much about you and I, it's probably I'm pulling pain or rejection from my past into this situation yeah. and maybe thinking one more script, like people always do this to me. You know, people um, yeah. always do this to me. It's like, you know, that person rejected me in the past. So I'm sure Kendra's just rejecting me now. Right. And this has more to do with rejection than her busy schedule. And so it's my choice whether I manage those emotions or not. And so pre-deciding that I'm not going to take things so personally is really, really important. Now, here's where this might get a little tricky. What if it's in a relationship where somebody has broken your trust before? And what if you suspect that they're lying or betraying you again? That's where things can get a little bit more complicated. But again, I have the ability to manage my emotions when I say to myself, um, I can trust but verify. In other words, I can say, I want to take this at face value, but let me just verify to make sure you're telling me the truth. And if they're not telling me the truth, then I have to look at it and say, this is more of an indication of the brokenness that exists in them and not so much the brokenness that exists in me. So learning how to not think, take things so personally, pre-deciding that it's just not going to be healthy long-term for me to get emotionally devastated by every situation. Trust me, there are some situations in your life where no matter how much you predecide, when that thing happens, it is going to cause emotional devastation. But I'm talking about the everyday instances that sometimes create so much wear and tear on us emotionally that when the harder, bigger, real things happen, we just don't have a lot to give and it just makes us sink into despair. And so I think pre-deciding is really important. Plus, I think for me, it helps me manage my mood. And um, I think a common thing that we'll often say is, well, you know, my kids were so bad today, they just made me in a bad mood. Mm -hmm. Or that person in the coffee shop was so rude, it just set my whole day off and I'm just in a bad mood. And it's like, I don't want people to have that much control over me. I don't want other people to have so much control over my mood. Right. Right. But the guy at the coffee shop, I can say to myself, I can pre-decide just because you laid down on a fence doesn't mean I'm going to pick it up, carry it with me and have it affect me the whole day. Right. I'm going to see this as an indication of something that happened to you. I can say a quick little prayer for you. Right. I can wish you well, but I'm not going to give you the control of determining my mood for the rest of the day. And carrying it out. Yeah. yeah. And then if we have less offenses in our life, we have less forgiveness prospects forgiveness processes that we have to walk through. And this isn't about denying our feelings. This isn't about pretending or making our heart, you know, so guarded that we almost become plastic figurine robots, right? But it is about deciding that we can pre-decide to not personalize things just because someone lays down an offense not to pick it up and that we don't want to hand over the control of our mood today to other people, that we really can make the decision for ourselves that I am going to walk in forgiveness. So sometimes in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll say, I'm going to send forgiveness ahead in all these different oh, places. That. I'm going to send forgiveness ahead to the coffee shop. I'm going to send forgiveness ahead into that family dinner. I'm going to send forgiveness ahead into that meeting with that complicated person right. at work. And I have already decided 
that um, I'm not going to freely hand them control over my emotions. There we go. I like that because then you're keeping some power, right? We can control our emotions, our response, our attitude, and it doesn't feel as hard to do. Mm -hmm. so and true. reserve our emotional energy for the people and situations that really require it. Yeah, that's good, Lisa. And I think that's the perfect message to end our time together. We have one more full week of study and we have loved studying alongside you. Lisa, thank you for this book. Thank you to your team that helped with this book. Um, it has been an honor to help give the, pro the message to those studying with us. Well, thank you so much, Kendra. I appreciate it. And of course, at Proverbs 31, we always say, yes. when you know the truth and you live, live the, the truth, truth, it changes everything. Yes. It may not change all your circumstances, right. but it changes the way that we face our circumstances. So good, Lise. All right, everyone, have a wonderful week six, and we'll see you soon.